Hey everyone, today I want to showcase two rocket fits designed for Alpha pilots. They are the Alpha T0 Kestrel and the Alpha T1 Hookbill. This video will be a little longer than usual as I want to go over some basic mechanics as well as general guidelines for the Abyss. These fits are designed for Alpha pilots who have already invested skill points into their missile support skills. If you're just starting out and didn't already take advantage of it, then I highly recommend using a referral link when creating an account. It rewards 1 million skill points, which lets you hop right into these fits. I'll include my referral link in the description below, but if you're playing with friends, I recommend you use theirs so you both can benefit from the rewards. As mentioned, these are rocket fits. We're using rockets because you can more easily reach the DPS requirements for solo abyssals with them. These fits are built for the cheap dark filaments, where we can easily operate in the rocket ranges. For those looking to skill into the Worm and Gila, rocket skills are a short detour in your skill plan. All of the support skills will carry over for those light missile and rapid light missile ships though. Either way, these two rocket fits will run T0 and T1 at a fraction of the cost of a Worm and will be much less punishing on mistakes. Before we move into the fits, let's talk real quick about missile mechanics and two guidelines for abyssal running. Missiles differ from turrets in that their damage is not instantly applied. Each missile salvo must travel to their target before applying damage. This presents EVE pilots with a few things to consider, most importantly what this means for your missile range. When you hover over your launchers in game and see missile range, this is based purely on missile speed and flight time. In practice though, this means your range will extend when the target is chasing you and shorten when they're flying away from you. You will see us apply this concept in both fits to get the ranges we want in a fight. Next, let's go over two quick guidelines. First, if you can face tank the damage of a spawn, then you'll want to fly at the range that lets you apply your maximum damage. If you cannot tank incoming DPS, then you'll want to outrange it to the point where you can and still apply good DPS. If you cannot do either of the above, then you'll want to revisit your ammo choices, fit, and potentially your pilot skills in order to survive the run. Our second guideline applies to target priority. Rather than memorize a long target priority list, I always recommend pilots apply the following logic to their abyssal runs. Number one, kill what's killing you now. This is usually high damage and lethal E-War. Priority two, kill what's killing you in two minutes from now. This is usually E-War. And number three, kill what's killing you 20 minutes from now. This mainly means everything you have to kill to get to the next room. Ultimately, this will make more sense with experience, but for now I'll highlight the spawns you need to be careful with throughout the rest of this video. Now, for the fits. Our Kestrel is very straightforward. Here I have the T2 launcher shown, but you can use the Arbalest if needed. However, don't move into the Abyss until you have about 90 DPS with this fit. It will matter for two spawns in particular, the Skybreaker and Devoted Hunter. With this fit, you're going to permarun your Afterburner and the Shield Booster. If you want, you can swap one of these batteries for a stasis webifier, which will help you with some pesky frigates like Damovix that never turn off their MWDs. The web version is very similar to the Omega Rocket T1 Kestrel, but I choose to fly without it on the Alpha version because it's going to be a lot closer to how we fly our hookbill. For your T0 runs in the Kestrel, default on Nova Rocket Ammo. We will use Inferno for eating comm ships like the Skybreaker, and Mjolnir for Sanchez like the Devoted Hunter. You can use standard rockets for all of this, but you can hold some Navy Inferno if you want a little bit more DPS against the Skybreaker. For ranges, you can choose to orbit your target 2500 meters or orbit the cache at the same distance. The latter will force ships like the Damovix to chase you, making it fly into your rockets. An exception to the range is the Devoted Hunter, orbited 500 meters to force grazing shots and even some misses. You need to commit to this brawl as it's a DPS race. He will eventually break you, but fortunately, you're going to break him first. The last spawn to highlight for the Kestrel is the Skybreaker. This NPC uses missile damage mechanics and will hit you harder the slower you fly your Kestrel. You can extend your orbit out to 5,000 meters to keep your speed up and lower the incoming DPS. Either way, swap to Inferno rockets to hit into the favorable resist. For the Kestrel and Hookbill, one thing to remember for your tank is that bleeding into armor and structure HP is fine. They are a resource like everything else, so using it is not something to freak out about. Moving on to the hookbill fit. Our hookbill is basically the same, except it runs an additional thermal shield amplifier and two range rigs. 
Really, the main difference in how you're going to fly this hook bow compared to the Kestrel will be swapping ammo types. Because the hook bow gets a slight edge to kinetic damage with our skills, the ammo choices are going to look like this. Scourge Rage by default. Nova for Damavix, Drone BCs, Drone Frigs, and the Drekovax. Mjolnir for Sancha, and Inferno for Eating Calm, just like the Kestrel. The other consideration you want for all of your rockets is Rage versus Javelin rockets. Rage does higher damage, but loses range and application. For the most part, range is the main thing we're going to worry about. When frigates swap off their MWDs in the Abyss, our Rage will do less damage. However, we're going to fly in such a way to force them to use their MWDs. Javelin, on the other hand, has the same damage and application as our standard rockets on the Kestrel, but it has a much higher range. Access to Javelin is what allows us to run T1 reliably. I would not actually move into T1 until you can use these Javelin rockets. With them, we can now outrage spawns that we cannot face tank, which goes back to the guideline we mentioned earlier. You can also swap to Javelin on Damavik spawns if you're having issues reaching them with Rage. Not to worry though, you can clear three frig rooms with Javelin and still have plenty of time left on the clock. You want to use Javelin rockets against devoted hunters, drone battle cruisers, kikimoras, and triple frigate spawns of the DED and Eden Khan ships. Again, these spawns are why I recommend holding off on moving to tier 1 until you can use the Tech 2 rockets, specifically Javelin. You want to be able to throw Javelin past 20 kilometers to be safe with the tougher spawns. For these Javelin spawns, orbit between 18 to 20 kilometers to avoid most of their damage. Watch for the boundaries so you don't trap yourself. The most punishing of these spawns is the drone battlecruiser. If you get within 10 to 13 kilometers and get bad luck, the battlecruiser can land a wrecking shot and it will one-shot you. Last up for our hookbill, I want to quickly highlight a few spawns. Remember to use javelin and kite drone battlecruisers, devoted hunters, kikimoras, and rooms where you have triple frigates of the DED and Edencom varieties. You can use rage in the DED and Edencom frigate rooms. This is the riskier strategy for the room, but remember, you can always just pull range to catch up on tank. For the drone battlecruiser, close the distance by flying it at an angle. Around 25 kilometers, set your orbit to 20 kilometers. This will minimize the time you drift in towards lethal ranges. For signables and knights, you want to commit with rage rockets and orbit at 500 meters. You will take damage on the approach, but you can avoid all damage once you set up that close orbit. Once in that orbit, your afterburner is more valuable than your shield booster when cap is concerned. For the Abyssal Overmind, use Mjolnir Rage for shields, Nova for armor, and Scourge for the structure hit points. You will hit natural reload points throughout the fight so you don't fall behind by swapping to the better damage types. Finally, remember at the start of every dark run, always check which penalty you rolled. You can expect to take more damage in the 30% rooms compared to the 50% rooms. Because turret ranges are nerfed in darks, we can always choose to fly away to catch up on tank before committing it again with our rocket damage. Thanks for watching. I hope this is helpful to the Alpha pilots out there. Feel free to comment below or ask me questions in game or in email. Good luck and have fun.